that you may knowest that thou art surely alive. The struggling of life gets no easier as thy bank account increases. Now, what have I told you? No, not if you get in, you know, money is not your problem. Now, let me tell you that again. You may think it is, you may think it's not. But according to what Bridget is reading at this moment, which applies to you, baby, money is not your deal. You, the pro, there is no problem though. There is no money is not your problem because you've got enough energy to. You know what money is? Money is nothing in the world but traveling energy. It is vital energy, and it's what you're willing to do to exchange for it. That's it. And it's not supposed. It's never meant to stay with you. It's supposed to travel on. Okay, what's your what's your birthday, William? Uh huh. I love 28. That's my favorite number, and I ain't jiving you. I love 28. Let me see what we got here. I'm going to do a little numerology on you, all right? 6, 7, 7 and 4 is 12, and that makes a 3. Let me make sure that I'm going to tell you right before I even open up my mouth. 3 and 1 is 4, and 7. That's an 11. Okay. We got an 11 going on here. Well, William, the first thing that I know in regards to you. You're a man that don't like to be told what to do, when to do, how to do, where to do, how many times to do, and whether you're gonna do it again. And anybody that's traveling with you better be having and able to carry their own bags because you're not interested in listening to a lot of excuses. Okay, but you're a very enlightened man, honey, and I don't make it my business to flatter people because flattery is a mockery and it also insults people. But I'm telling you, you have got some deep wisdom. You were old when you were young and you're getting younger as you get older. It is true, darling. It is true. And you're standing at a place in your life right now that you're confronting some things that you're so sick and tired of continuing to repeat those things, those same old things. You know what they are, but you continue to do it, but you don't know how to get out of them. Well, I'm telling you that you're standing before a door that's marked, enter at thy own risk. You hear me? You're standing at that door and it's up to you. Now you can knock on it lightly if you want to, or you can muster up that courage that you have and kick the doggone thing down because you're not gonna confront one thing on the other side of that door that it, except that it is another level of your being. And you're interested in liberty. And I'm not talking about like getting out of prison and, and except that I am talking about that. Liberty means that you feel good about what you do without having to be validated on the outside. Are you with me? That's what, that's liberty. That means I don't have to explain myself to you. I don't have to excuse my actions and I don't have to ask permission. Now that's real liberty, sweetie. All right, well, I'm glad that you called. Thank you so much, William. And keep listening, keep listening and keep knocking those doors down because you are standing at a place where you can really learn something about yourself. And stop identifying with that goodness in you. That is keeping you from moving ahead. You hear me? All right, bye. Okay. Wow, Bridget, that was nice, wasn't it? Yeah. I guess it was nice. Let's go ahead. What do we got here? Um... We got another phone call is what we got. <laughs> oh, hello? Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great and going to get better. I tell you that, I'm having so much fun, I can't stand it. And what's your name? John. Now, I love a John. You know, I just said I love um, the number 28, but I love John. I love the name John because you've got a soft, soft, gentle way about you. And you have the ability to pierce through BS. You know what I'm talking about? You... You're real good in business. You're terrible in intimate relationships, but you are real good in business. You hear me? But you, the reason for it is you're always trying to please. See? And you can't do that, darling. You cannot please somebody because 
It is a well-known fact. If I do something for you, you're going to end up resenting me because I can't help you because that would put me in a higher position and I'm not in a higher position than you are. You understand that? Okay, well, let me see what Bridget's got reading right here for you so I can see what's going on with you, darling. Where are we at? Right here. Okay? No, yeah. Okay. 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 Read it. Struggling will, in the end, bleed itself into non-struggle when one recognizes the strife as friction as benefactors, not buds. Okay, that's exactly what I just told him, man. Good mm -hmm. gracious sake. Get out of here. Struggling, John, in the end will bleed itself out into non-struggle when one recognizes the strife and friction as benefactors, not foes. Now, what I'm saying, I'm going to put it in short terms for you, John, because that's why you called. You don't have much time, and you're interested in people to get right to the nitty-gritty, okay? When you're pleading for anything, you are bleeding, all right? Now, look at your life. When you are pleading... For anything you're bleeding put a tourniquet on it and get up and keep getting up because you're not a man that grasp for anything because if you're having to grasp for it grasp you hear that p on the end of it then it doesn't belong to you sweetie there's somewhere else in some place else that you're being called to go don't plead, don't apologize, don't defend in any circumstances. And I'm talking about to your mother, your father, your brother, your wife, your cousin, nobody ever. Because there is something in you that is greater than your ability to want to have peace around you. You know what I mean? And compromise is the word of the hour, but it's compromise on your terms. Are you with me? And what's your birthday, baby? Okay, May 5th, what year? 1979. Okay, so we got an 8, we got a 13, and we got a 5. You're a 9. My goodness. You're in this life. You are learning how to be disinterested. Now, that sounds so cold, but I'm telling you, John, when we can care with no self-vested interest, interest in it, that's when we really start caring. Because if, if I'm going to get something back from caring for you, what have I done? i got to care for you unconditionally with nothing coming back from you. Right? Because you're the walking embodiment of love itself, so you don't have to try to love. I love you, sweetie. Okay, bye-bye. Well, Bridget, we're batting 100, ain't we? You're doing a good job. Come on, good gracious <laughs> sakes. Well, I'm on the mic this time. Right. Really oh, that's right. I'm supposed to put you on the mic. Good evening, I love you, and hello, and that one hung up. Goodbye. So, <laughs> here we go. Where are we at now? That is a mystery. We are, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. We talked to William, and we're getting ready to talk to somebody else. Put him on the mic. Okay, I'm going to put you on the mic. Hello, and thank you for calling Cosmic Therapy, and you are TV, and I'm glad to be talking to you. Who are you? Hello, Ben. Ben can be your friend. Oh, gosh, Ben, I'm so glad you called me. Oh, darling, I've been waiting for your call. Oh, my goodness sakes, tell me about your birthday, baby. Get out of here. October, I'm talking to a genuine Libra. You get out of here. Let me see. We got... Um, well, you can tell me something about some relationships, can't you? You you certainly can. Let me see if we've got... Oh, I'm supposed to be putting them on the... Okay, they're telling me I'm supposed to be putting you on the um, microphone. But I'm enjoying talking to you so much and I don't want to share you. You know what I mean? Okay, well, let me see. One and two. Let me make sure. And you got a five going on. You got an eight destiny. Did you know that? Okay, that means that you have problem with control. Okay? And learning how to relax and let go. And I want you to put this over your bed frame. All right? Get rid of the temptation of memory. You got me? Huh? 
That's right. Because that's causing your misery, sweetie. Well, I mean, I'm going to let you say that aloud. I want the people to hear that. Say that aloud, honey. <laughs> All right. No, the other end. The other end. The Here you go. Go ahead, and, go ahead and say it, baby. It's my main memory. It's all about memory. It's my main problem. That's right. And what did you say about me? <laughs> You're done. That's right. I don't know whether I have it up and down. But, Ben, thank you so much for calling me. I, you don't know. Thank you. And you put that over your bed. You hear me? Get rid of the temptation of memory because it is causing your misery, baby. I love you, darling. Bye. Okay. Where are we at? We're at Ben. Ben can be our friend. What I was going to tell you, um, Bridget, I love it. God, please, don't I love it? Don't I love it? Don't I love it? Hello, good evening, and thank you for calling Cosmic Therapy. And that one hung up to her or got cut off. But anyway, we're going to talk about this, Bridget. All right. You remember? We're talking about self-confrontation. Every person that has called here tonight is an aspect of yourself. Mm -hmm. William was an aspect of yourself. This person's John an was an of aspect of yourself. Ben was an aspect of yourself. And this, whoever this is. Hello, and thank you for calling Cosmic Therapy and URTV. I am so delighted you called. Hi, and who am I talking with? Sarah, hello, Sarah. Oh, what a beautiful light. Is that with an H or an A? Oh, I love that, sweetie. And your middle name? And spelled how? Ah, my duck granddaughter is Daisy Lee. So, I love that name. And tell me your birthday, baby. 1974. Okay, so we have a Gemini going on here. We have um, six, let me do, do some numerology on you right quick, because I just got off the phone with Ben, and I got to tell you something, okay? And I want you to put it over top of your bed, too, because Ben's going to put it over top of his bed, and William's going to listen to it, and so is John. And Bridget's going to really meditate upon it. You hear me? Okay. Don't let the memory, the temptation of memory, get into your daily walk. Now what? Oh, you can write it down. That's a Gemini, ain't it? Okay, go ahead and write that down. Okay, don't let the temptation of memory get into your daily walk. Okay? Because it's causing you a lot of heartache, sweetie. Excuse me. See, what I'm feeling when I'm talking to you is that you're comparing things of yesterday with today. Okay, and she's saying she always does. That's her. She compares things. I'm supposed to be having this up against the, the uh, microphone so people can hear you, but I don't know which one to put it on. The bottom or the top, Sandy? The top. Okay, so let me tell you something else, and then you can respond, and the people at home can hear you, okay? But anyway, what's happening is because you're letting the temptation of memory enter into your existence, and everything is connected. I got Bridget on the line, and she, I mean, here right beside me, and she's reading, and out of this book, it has to do with self-confrontation. That's what we're talking about, honey. We're talking about you confronting yourself. And so there's some type of involvement that you're involved with that you are comparing yesterday, last week, last month, last year, and you want it to be now, okay? That's a memory. You hear me? That's the temptation of memory telling you that you could take the event that has already transpired and transpassed. I made up a new word. It's done gone. And you're trying to bring it into the current moment. And you can't do that, sweetie. It doesn't get any better than this. Show up for your life now. You hear me? You cannot take and go back and push a moment further than what it was. That moment was good for that moment. This moment is good for this moment. You hear me? All right. Well, let me see. Let me go ahead and do some um, some figuring on this and see what we're talking to. Six. Oh, oh, hold on. Hold. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, sweetie. Wait, wait, wait. You're talking too good. I want the people to hear you. All right. Which way? Talk. Okay, go ahead. 
I said, I just wanted to let you know I've been hearing your show, and I love it, and it's helped me a lot, and I've been telling my friends to listen out, too, and I just want to, I'm so glad you're up here, and I hope you continue to stay on the air. Boy, I love that. I heard that. So thank you so much, honey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The people's got to hear that. Okay, go ahead. I said, of course, what you're talking about and what I'm talking about, but I, we haven't said it out, is a, is a man that I'm seeing. And I just want to see if we're, if it is just a memory because we did. We spent a lot of time together. Not now, not as much as we used to. And so I was just wondering, is it better just to leave it as a memory or it, will it come back? Okay. I think I heard some of that. But let me get ahead and finish because um, I was feeding that into the microphone and only the people out there can hear it. I was just hearing a little bit, but I heard what I needed to. What I have done with numerology, sweetie, is I have determined that you have a seven destiny. Do you know anything about that? Okay. And Bridget, did we not start off with seven? Yep, I rolled seven. There it is. Bridget rolled seven only, honey, so she knew you were going to call. So here's the deal. You're talking about, um, and we're talking about, self-confrontation. And we're talking about the mystery and the surprise of your life. And what you have done, you have gotten into a rut. Would you not agree? A rut that you are either sitting by the phone waiting for his phone call, which doesn't come, and when it doesn't come, you're filling your mind with all sorts of memorized disappointments. Okay. So that means that you're not living your life. Your mind, you are getting up in the morning, and the first thing that hits your uh, mind before your feet hit the... F okay, wait a minute. Let's let the audience hear you say that. I said, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is he going to call me? Am I going to see him? Is he going to text me? <laughs> okay. So you, all of that is memory, honey. It's the temptation of memory. You can't even live your day because you're already back there in yesterday. You know what I mean? So you are not giving your life the opportunity to surprise you, to unfold, to be to be involved in the mystery. Hold on just a moment and let me see what, what Bridget's going to read next and how it applies to you. Go with um, it, sweetie. Oh. Where are we at? Right here, struggling. Struggling becomes no longer necessary when thou doesn't 